Uh, great, Noel. Thanks very much, um, and good morning, everybody. And again, as Joe uh, is and was, I'm really, really pleased to be here to mark 10 years of insight and grateful to Noel for the invitation and Joe for um, representing the department. And I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to celebrate this moment with the entire insight community. And by that, I mean the research team, of course, at its centre, the investigators, postdoctoral researchers and PhD students, the operating team, uh, that, uh, the operations team that makes it all happen. And of course, very importantly, in the context of this centre and SFI research centres in general, uh, the collaborators in industry, uh, in the public sector and civil society. And it's interesting that Insight has evolved over the years beyond an enterprise academic partnership into an enterprise academic civil society and government and public sector partnership. And the success that we're celebrating here today is dependent on the contributions that you have all made uh, to the work of the centre, to the strategy for the centre, and to fulfilling the mission of the centre. As Joe has said, SFI research centres are unique. Um, the model has evolved uh, over a period now of a little over 10 years through three phases and will continue uh, to evolve and develop and be a core component um, of how we fund this type of research uh, in this country. They bring together multidisciplinary teams from across different research bodies and increasingly different um, modes and types of research and disciplines um, and to create critical mass for collaborative research of international significance. The single most important result of all of this effort is talent, uh, and in this case, uh, talent and skills in the area of data analytics, and talent at all levels. Talent from the immediate emergence, um, from a very high quality of doctoral training, right through early career, out to supporting people in academia and enterprise to build effective collaborations and major research programs later in their careers. I do really think that SFI research centres demonstrate the power of partnership. I mean, I think the first public policy intervention in Ireland that demonstrated just how valuable it was for institutions to collaborate and how valuable partnership was, was PRTLI. And then CSETs and certainly the SFI research centres really built on that kind of ethos and spirit um, that in a country of this size, the diversity of higher education institutions was valuable but the capacity to mobilize across higher education institutions to common purpose delivered things at scale that we couldn't deliver separately. So first of all, it, it demonstrates the power of that kind of partnership, bringing people, ta bringing talent together across a number of higher education institutions to create a critical mass and a flourishing community. And second, the power of engaged in partnership research. And I just want to highlight the importance again of those partners, including small and medium enterprises, multinational corporations, public bodies, and civil society organizations who've contributed to the success of Insight. But I do think it's important to recognize that we're often slow in Ireland to acknowledge when we do things really, really well. Appropriately, as a small country, we're constantly looking to models of best practice internationally, but the reality is we have a model of best practice here, which international partners are increasingly looking to. It has its own unique context and, and capacities, and it's very much something that we want to promote and preserve as we go forward. It's a particular pleasure to be here celebrating Insight. I mean, technology, as we all know, is now at the core of our everyday existence. Um, and it's, become, it's come to that core so quickly, it's kind of hard to reflect upon just how quickly society has been transformed by technology, but just how early we remain in that wave of transformation, how early we are in the digital transition. Um, I'm a terrible addict to the YouTube channel Computer File, as in computer, P-H-I-L-E, I love computers. Not something, there's only certain publics you can declare that in front of, and this is one of them. But I, in the course of that, um, I realized that, that last Thursday, the 15th of June, was the 30th anniversary of the PDF. So like I was 26 when PDFs appeared, and now they're stock and trade. Thursday fortnight, uh, the 29th of June, is the 16th anniversary of the release of the iPhone, which like, really was the first step in making computing ubiquitous. And these are just stock and trade of our everyday lives now, but also a presage for 
an exponential change, and I use that term expertly and advisedly, um, in terms of how, transform, how technology is going to transform our lives over the next two decades, uh, for sake of argument. And also a change that we're only beginning to process um, in broader socio-technical terms. So, and we're at an interesting juncture where, at the moment, I think, the public dialogue is more focused on the potential dystopian or dangerous aspects of things. We're talking about the dangers of AI, the energy consumption of data centers, and so on. But the reality is uh, that digital and data are enormous opportunities for us as a society. And the digital and green transitions, as you know, are interlinked. Uh, the green transition will be digital, and the digital transition must be green. I think we're also anticipating a health transition which will be technology enabled. So the really wonderful thing to be celebrating here in Insight is this is one of the platforms that Ireland can use to translate the digital transition from something which might hit us or overwhelm us to something that we might face together uh, effectively as a society. And in that, and Joe has already alluded to it, two things are material. One is we have had this extensive consultation process about what should centres of the future uh, look like and the need for agility and transition and even wider interdisciplinarity. And then related to that, there is the Research and Innovation Bill, which creates the legislative basis for the formation of a new funding agency through the Amalgamation of Science Foundation Ireland and the IRC. Um, and as you all probably know, uh, about two weeks ago, the minister wrote to me to appoint me CEO designate of that new agency. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for me. It's a wonderful opportunity for the two agencies. One I embrace fully by immediately leaving the country uh, for a period of reflection in France, during which I'll figure out exactly how we're going to deliver uh, this very ambitious uh, objective. But one of the critical things that's stated in Impact 2030 which that amalgamation can bring about is an increasing emphasis on the capacity of interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity to address the digital transition as a transdisciplinary challenge. And in, in people in this room thinking about uh, the future of this centre and where this centre might be in 5, 10, 20 years' time, or the community involved in this centre might be in 5, 10 or 20 years' time, I'd really encourage kind of as the years go on, really quite radically different thinking about how we approach the digital transition as a truly, genuinely transdisciplinary challenge, uh, which will bring together all relevant disciplines and address this as, as an opportunity and challenge faced by people, um, and I know you wouldn't anyway, uh, not uh, a straightforward technical challenge. So, with great congratulations uh, to the Insight team for the extraordinary contribution that they've made over 10 years, and really genuinely uh, wishing you the best for the next decade and hoping to see you as part of the picture that helps us shape the digital transition into the future. Thank you very much indeed.